Well, on today's podcast, I'm joined by Father Jan Novotnik, who's our Director of Mission at the Bishop's Conference, and is in fact in Prague for the Continental Assembly of our ongoing synodal journey. Father Jan, how are you doing? I'm very well, James. Um, a little tired after three days in the Assembly, but uh, yeah, it's it's good to be here. Well, it's good to see you. Now, look, I know you don't have much time because you're due back in the room, of course, <laughs> to carry on with the delegates. Um, you're there with Bishop Nicholas Hudson, who's leading the four person delegation that's actually in Prague. Uh, Sarah Adams from the Clifton Diocese, yourself, of course, and uh, Jessica Wilkinson from the Leeds Diocese. Now, that's right. the group in Prague, isn't it? That's that's the four of us in Prague. And uh, just to give people a context, we're sitting in a line of four uh, very near the front of the room, actually, and the Irish delegation led by Archbishop Martin are directly behind us. So there's some good English speaking contact uh, going on right in the room. So, some good synodality, I hope. Some good synodality. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and on that, I, obviously, you've been discussing the what's called the document for the continental stage and how that sort of dovetails or not with our own national synthesis, which we compiled by consulting far and wide, as far and wide as we, we could for sure. So um, tell us a little bit about why you're out there and what you're hoping to achieve. First of all, we're here because we're joining the other 38 Episcopal conferences from across Europe. So there are 39 of us in total. Um, as you know, each one has got a delegation of four people in person here in Prague and 10 at home um, observing and joining in online. In fact, this afternoon, we're having the contributions from the online groups. Um, so we've split our time between being in the plenary hall together um, all of the delegates, we've celebrated Mass together and uh, the, and prayed together. The first thing after that was then to hear the reports from the National Bishops' Conferences. So um, they've been doing them in sections of 13. So England and Wales came at the end of Monday morning. We were the last uh, of the Monday morning before lunch. And the task really was to sort of look at the resonances between our own national synthesis and the continental stage synthesis, the, the document. And as I think uh, we've already published um, on our webpage, you know, those resonances um, are there. You know, what is the, the vision of the church? What is a synodal church? Um, how do we live the dignity of our baptism? Um, how do we look at, um, at, the, at the life of the Holy Spirit, um, our life of prayer? But then also the resonances, which we know are very clear. Um, how do we look to those who feel marginalized? Um, and that came up in our national synthesis. And the, there are lots of different groups. And, you know, you always do a bit of an injustice when you mention one group above another. But I can certainly say from what happened in the room, we're often hearing virtually every country talks about the role of women, um, the LGBTQ+. Plus, um, people and then also the role of formation and mission um, I would say those have resonated um, the greatest really and alongside that actually to be fair um, the role of young people so those four topics came up very much um, in the earlier discussions when we were talking about our our synthesis. So when there isn't agreement let's say or, or where we sort of move away from the, the document for the continental stage how do you cope with those tensions how, how do you get around the, the fact that it's almost impossible to get total agreement across the piece absolutely and i think that that has come out very clearly because there there is not total agreement of the all of the episcopal conferences um on some of those topics i've just been talking about and i know that some painful words have been said um and there have been anxieties and, and you can sort of feel that tension sometimes in the room. Having said that, um, two observations I'd make about how we cope with disagreement is that the first thing at the end of every intervention, um, there is a round of applause. And I don't think that is because everyone necessarily agrees with what is said completely but it's to give a, a valuation for the, the right that people have to be heard. And I think that is very much part of a synodal church. Cardinal Grech, when he introduced us to what we would be doing here in Prague, you know, said everyone had the right to be heard. Everyone must listen and we must speak boldly. 
And it may mean at times that there will be disagreements. So for me, actually, you know, the fact that we applaud each time has shown that respect. And in our group conversations, um, we've had a kind of a spiritual conversation in our groups. So they've been set out so that people speak, um, resonating what they've heard in the main hall. But it's not a debate between each other, but we allow each other to speak, to let that word be heard. We reflect and then we come back to each other with comment. So actually, I think there are disagreements, but we're dealing with them well. Oh, good to hear. Now, obviously, you mentioned this sort of inclusivity aspect, uh, role of women, you, some of the, bit, the the hot topics, the big topics yeah. we, we'd no doubt expect to be to cause debate, I guess. But also I noticed in Bishop Hudson's intervention, there was mention of good formation, if you like, or what that might look like. Tell me a little bit about the, the formation issue. I think what is becoming very, very clear, um, you know, and it came through in my group discussions this morning, the group that I was in and in other groups, because we had the feedback this morning from the groups. And the question today was, um, you know, how can we take this phase deeper? What do we think the Lord is saying to the church at the moment? And quite a few of the interventions this morning were about our relationship with Jesus Christ, that through our baptismal dignity, we are members of the church um, and we have a relationship with the Lord. And it is the task of the church to, to evangelize, to, to make the Lord known. But we can only do that if we are formed, if we form each other in the, in the life of prayer, through our own personal prayer, and of course, the life of the liturgy, especially the Eucharist. But then also that we have opportunities to, to form ourselves in how the Lord speaks to us in the scriptures um, and in our catechesis. So I think that is what we're, you know, hearing a lot of um, in the room. Now, church teaching can obviously be challenging within the walls of the mm. church and also, of course, outside the walls of yep. the church. So you do need solid formation to, to be able to explain that we have a common good message, don't you? Absolutely. And I think, you know, this is where we were talking a few moments ago about disagreements. And there have been disagreements where people have spoken very powerfully um, and very beautifully about those who are in same sex relationships, about the role of women in the church, about the divorced and remarried, um, you know, whether we should have married priests, whether we should have women priests. All these topics have come up. Um, and I think as I reflect on it, you know, there are two sides to, to how we respond. There is the truth of the teaching of the church, um, which we believe cannot change, that, that doctrine um, which is handed on generation from generation, which was given to us by the Lord. And that is tempered with what Pope Francis often reminds us about being the church of mercy, about accompanying each other. Um, about being the field hospital, that the church is the field hospital that looks after the wounds of the vulnerable. Um, and I think that tension, and I'm going to use the word tension, um, has been displayed in our synodal discussions. And for us to really understand what the Lord is saying to the church, we need good formation. Um, we need to be able to confidently proclaim our faith um, so that we can offer that embrace of mercy and love and generosity and see ways in which we can all be involved um, in the life of the church. Well, this is, of course, a process that is taking years. <laughs> so we, we can't deal with it in five or six minutes. So I hope our listeners forgive us a bit for just scratching at the surface of some of this. But I should finish with this question because I know you have to get back in the hall. And that is that, again, in, in that intervention, Bishop Hudson's intervention, there's that acknowledgement that actually some priests, certainly some lay people, don't really get the process. Um, they're not sure how they're supposed to engage with the synodal process. So I just want to conclude by asking you, what does a healthy synodal journey look like and how do we access it? Um, I think, and I, I have some kind of sympathy with those who um, have not been able to engage for whatever reason, who find the whole thing just a bit confusing, a bit challenging, and wondering whether the church even has lost a bit of sense of direction. Um, what I'm getting, the sense I'm getting is that what the Holy Father has asked us to do, and you know, it's been very exciting to be here with 
laymen and women from across the whole of Europe, from different cultures, different expressions of the liturgy, you know, from Byzantine Catholics to, to Latin Catholics. You know, we've had in my group where I was, there was a member of um, the Ukrainian Catholic Church with a member of the Russian Church um, sitting in the same group. Um, I think what synodality is asking of us is, is two things, that we just look into our hearts and to our minds and into our lives to say, I'm a child of God. Through baptism, I believe that God has called me to be a member of his church. And the synodal process, I think, is the church asking ourselves, all the members of the body of Christ, what does it mean to be a member of the church in the context of the world in which we live? And that will be different, as we've heard in the room, for all of our cultural contexts and our backgrounds. But what is similar for all of us is that we are chosen by God. We are loved by God. And he wants us to promote that message. And I think what came through so clearly to me last evening is that, you know, um, the Ukrainian Catholic Church led us in prayer for peace. Um, there is a war on our continent at the moment. Um, and... The church can't be too introspective. We can't just look at ourselves and keep on asking questions. What does Jesus want? It's very clear. He wants us to know we're loved and to proclaim that love um, to others. And I think that is the invitation for everyone. It's not to be feared. It's just to, to be reinvigorated in, in the work of the gospel. I think that's coming through clearly in our in our work here in Prague. Well, that is quite an invitation, and um, I'll take you up on it when you get back to the UK. So thanks Absolutely. for now. Absolutely, no, thank you, and uh, and I'm sorry that I couldn't give you more time. But in about I think seven or eight minutes' time, I'm due back in in the hall for our online interventions, and it's it'll be good for those people who've been watching from their homes to feel very much part of what we're doing here. So we're looking forward to that this afternoon. And then we have Mass, just so everybody knows. Uh, we're celebrating Mass in Prague Cathedral this evening, and uh, Cardinal Grech will be presiding. And I think that will be a real moment of a great outpouring of prayer and asking for the Holy Spirit um, to, to guide us in the work that we're doing. Well, amen, I think we'll say amen. to that. <laughs> Thank you.